What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. In today's video, we're going to run through a bunch of news related to XRP, the digital asset, the XRP ledger, the company Ripple, and Medico. We'll also touch base on the transactions per second for the XRP ledger on Ripple's website, ripple.com slash XRP. They updated these numbers a while back up to 3,400 TPS. And I guess there's some type of inscription spam attack that's going on on the XRP ledger, where we can see the transactions per second are down to 77. And you can view this at livenet.xrpl.org. So what looks to be some type of attack on the XRP ledger with this inscription spam or all of these spammy transactions that just congest the network. So this could be somebody trying to exploit potential vulnerabilities or somebody's actually testing its limits. So we'll keep tabs on this. If you guys do know what's going on, please let me know down below. I'm not sure if this is just a test before trying to get TPS higher or if this is somebody actually trying to find vulnerabilities or simply try to slow down the network with all of these pointless transactions. So the TPS is bouncing between 60, 70, even 80, and we can see the number of XRP that have been burned permanently since inception. And the XRP ledger has had zero downtime since inception and over 80 million ledgers successfully closed. So to touch on Medico, Ripple the company acquired Medico, the Swiss-based custodian, for $250 million earlier this year. The take on the growing institutional crypto custody market expected to reach $10 trillion by 2030. So Medico is huge, they're partnered with IBM, BBVA, all types of banks, and when they give this type of prediction or projection of $10 trillion for the growing institutional crypto custody market, I wonder what that means for the crypto asset class and its market cap. Here's the total market cap of the entire crypto asset class over the past 10 plus years just on Cointrader, and on the weekly or monthly we can see a clear ascending channel, with the all-time high at $3 trillion. What's interesting about this is this lower trend line right here, we can see it's actually held pretty well. So right there, we have the wick and candle bodies bouncing off. Even towards our cycle low and before the impulse, we also got the wick and candle bodies. So up top, we just have an internal trend line being respected to some degree for resistance and support all the way across the board. And even right down the middle, all the way up, and then you can ignore this bottom trend line. I was just adding another parallel level. So we're sitting at around $1.6 trillion for the total market cap of the crypto asset class. But when you compare to a lot of other major markets and global asset classes, a lot of them are valued over $100 trillion. The global stock market and equities, the global bond market, real estate is hundreds of trillions, global derivatives is hundreds of trillions, S&P 500 is over $30 trillion. We have gold recently hitting an all-time high price. We have the Dow Jones hitting an all-time high. And these are things we saw last cycle for that probability of the next cycle starting and going into all-time highs. Alternative investments is projected to go over 20 trillion, you know, commodities market, a couple dozen trillion. So if Medico is estimating that the institutional crypto custody market is going to be $10 trillion, what does that mean for the total market cap of the crypto asset class? Is it the same? I know a lot of us hope for the crypto asset class to reach dozens of trillions of dollars and become a major asset class. And with all these projections that we've had for tokenization from BCG, even estimating a $16 trillion business opportunity for globally illiquid assets to be tokenized by 2030. I'll still be that crazy guy that thinks that we create another all-time high price in the future, surpassing three, getting up to five, getting up to eight trillion. Even this ascending channel only takes us out to 2027 and BCG's estimates of $16 trillion is 2030. And the XRP ledger and a variety of other crypto assets are capable of tokenization. They've already tokenized different assets or funds. And we know that SWIFT even estimates the volumes of tokenized assets could reach $24 trillion by 2027. Plus, cross-border payments are only going to be getting bigger. Even BCG cross-border payment flows are estimated to reach $250 trillion by 2027. Now here we have the XRP market cap overlaid with Ethereum's market cap as the orange. And there have been two times in history, or at least two times, where XRP's market cap was higher than Ethereum's or it flipped it for a brief period. You can also look at the market cap on different tools like CoinMarketCap.com and then just combine Ethereum with the compare tool right there. We can see periods where XRP's market cap briefly surpassed the market cap of Ethereum. So for anybody to say that XRP can't flip Ethereum's market cap, that's silly because it's happened before. And Ethereum's all-time high market cap last cycle was $570 billion. Even back in 2018, XRP's all-time high market cap was around $140 billion. So even today, if XRP surpassed Ethereum's all-time high market cap of $570 billion, XRP would be over $10. Bucks. If we're looking at XRP today, taking Ethereum's current market cap, that would be over $5. Bucks. And this website is the coin perspective for anybody curious right there, and you can basically size any asset and compare the market caps to the current value, but this is not the all-time high market cap for comparison. But here we can see XRP's price based off its current circulating supply comparing it to the current market caps of other alts. 
You remember that Robbie Michnick used to work for Ripple, and he made this paper with Susan Athey back in 2018 of June, a fundamental valuation framework for crypto assets, looking at both XRP and Bitcoin giving a low estimate and a high estimate, showing Bitcoin low estimates around 45k and then the high estimate around 93k, and then XRP for the low estimate of $6 and then the high estimate of 32 bucks. And it was interesting because after this paper, Robbie Michnick left Ripple and then he was hired by BlackRock as head of digital assets. Next up, I want to play this Bitcoin spot ETF commercial that was put out with the Dos Equis guy. I might have to trim it out if there's copywriting issues, but just wanted to share that Bitwise released this ETF commercial for a Bitcoin spot ETF. <laughs> You know what's interesting these days? Bitcoin. Look for Bitwise, my friends. Now back to Medico's website, we're seeing infrastructure being built for enterprise adoption of DLT. And these are all things that have to be built out. We don't even have regulatory clarity, so it makes it a lot more difficult. So infrastructure in terms of custody, cold storage, multi-sig, Key recovery, liquidity, payment rails, all types of things. So Medico is a very big organization, over 100 employees, over 20 plus jurisdictions. We can see a bunch of organizations such as this, the ISSA, the International Security Services Association. So here's a list of the member firms as of October this year. We have a bunch of organizations including Accenture, different securities exchanges, BNP Paribas, we have Citigroup, DBS Bank, the largest bank in terms of AUM in Singapore. DZ Bank, Medico's partnered with them, I believe. We have Medico in this list, but I don't see any crypto company or blockchain-based company directly, like a mention of the company Ripple or Hedera. But we do have Nucleus Finance, which leverages Casper Network, that is their layer one partner. We have NASDAQ, and of course, R3, which is huge. But we have a lot of Medico partners as well, including VP Bank. We have the DTCC, all types of organizations. We have SEB, and then also SIX, right there. But the ISSA did publish a paper back in 2016 going over crypto assets. So we can see Ripple's building an interledger protocol to facilitate token transactions. We have a mention of R3, the W3C, and then the technical committee, TC307. And then this section, a potential for role for ISO 222, where the company Ripple is sitting on the ISO 222 standards body. The mainstream media might act like the crypto asset class is a complete joke, but why are all these banks basically investing in crypto infrastructure and custody? So Zodia right here is backed by Standard Chartered, SBI Holdings, and Northern Trust. The integration enables institutions to access Zodia Custody's bank-grade custody solutions through Medico. And then even partnering with BBVA right there, expanding its partnership with Medico, banks seek to accelerate its digital asset offerings to institutional clients. And even recently, Ripple added to the Central Bank of Ireland's VASP or Virtual Asset Service Providers Register. We have National Bank of Georgia selecting Ripple as their key partner for their pilot project and their CBDC platform. And even XRP in Dubai licensed firms can now incorporate XRP the digital asset into their virtual asset services. We also have David Schwartz right here just highlighting XRP versus XLM over the past year and we can see a clear correlation like always. And this guy's asking why they're so close and David the CTO of Ripple says, I think there are a variety of factors that might be at play and it's hard to know which are real. One thing is that all digital assets track each other significantly. I think that's because the market is still trying to figure out if they're going to be a thing and so industry news affects all tokens. Some have speculated that all tokens track Bitcoin because a huge fraction of that liquidity is in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin's price moves, it moves the price of all other assets because there's not much drive to change the price with respect to Bitcoin. As for why particular assets correlate more strongly such as XRP and XLM, I think it could be at least partly because people think of them as requiring similar conditions to succeed or fail. But who knows? We have Rath Economist, and another must follow. So regarding the AMM or automated market maker coming to the XRP ledger win, the validators are actually in agreement and vote to make the change. He believes the AMM will hit the XRP ledger in a time frame when stablecoin bridges and possibly carbon credits grow. This could create some very interesting possibilities for XRP liquidity and staking pools. So I agree and I really hope in 2024 we get this big stablecoin bill that we've been hearing about because that would be huge. But with all of these other countries building their own CBDCs and leveraging stablecoins, that's a huge threat to the US dollar. And Jeremy Hogan right here, how can a stablecoin be a security? How can you buy something that's pegged to a dollar and expect profit from it? Right here in the SEC vs Terraform Labs case, a stablecoin is a security when you can stake it for a return on investment, regardless of whether you personally stake it or not. We have shared by Crypto Eddie with the press release linked below, we can see DeFi Technologies announces strategic acquisition of leading Solana trading systems IP. 
So we can see 10 digital assets in this list, including XRP, and the acquiring company behind the Valor digital asset backed 10 ETP or exchange traded product in the soon XRP backed ETP will have powerful trading solutions specifically designed for Solana. And this IP has an AMM or an automated market maker solution that facilitates the trading of digital assets in a permissionless and automatic model using liquidity pools. And another huge reason I want to see both the Bitcoin and the Ethereum spot ETF be approved is because this will lead to more ETPs and ETFs for a variety of crypto assets. Similar to 21shares.com where they have an XRP exchange traded product live today that is backed by actual XRP with over $50 million in AUM. So this is 100% physically backed by the underlying Ripples or XRP. They used to call XRP the digital asset Ripples back in the day. And the XRP is kept in cold storage by an institutional grade custodian. So this ticker is AXRP. I would love to see more for a variety of crypto assets. And they have ETPs for other assets already like Algo, Ada, Aave, Polkadot, etc. So we talked about Ripple being added to the Central Bank of Ireland for their list of virtual asset service providers in this register. But we have Anders saying Ripple will passport its services to the whole European Union from Ireland. Since EU-wide crypto regulations called MICA or MICA which we'll go over are coming into force in 2024. So I just say MICA, but this stands for Market and Crypto Assets Regulation. And this is on the European Securities and Markets Authority website. And so this MICA, or Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation, MICA, entered into force in June of 2023. And we have Rath Economist showing Tranglo, a Ripple partner, and Ripple also owns a portion of Tranglo, has entered Myanmar, however you say that, Myanmar, via a partnership with KBZ Bank for remittances. And remember, Tranglo on tranglo.com slash ODL is an ODL user that is using XRP and real payment flows today. And remember, we have Merlin linked in the top of this YouTube video description and in the pinned comment. I will also link this video that I did a while back going over exit plans and how I personally structure it. Feel free to check it out. As hard as bear markets are, we understand that the crypto markets operate in cycles and I believe another cycle is just a matter of time. And Merlin not only tracks your crypto, but you can cater specific exit plans for all of your holdings for every single asset. And I think having a plan set for the future is so important versus no plan at all. Where you can look at your holdings, decide how much you want to hold for the long term, how much you want to sell, when are you getting your initial investment out, and when are you taking staggered profits to de-risk the entire way. And we have Merlin linked in the top of my link tree right there. Where you can test out these features and build your own exit plan and please check out that video I'll also add a card to this video so you can go check it out if you haven't seen it yet so you can run these numbers and see the numbers for yourself to make the best exit plan possible we also have itrust capital linked in the top of this youtube video description if you use that link and create a free account you get a 100 dollars funding reward and i've had a roth ira with itrust capital since january of 2020 so all of my gains grow 100 percent tax free and friendly reminder the platform is free there's no monthly cost no startup cost or anything like that with just a 1% transaction fee when you buy and sell. If you're just holding your crypto for the long term, you're not paying a single penny. So the same transaction fee as Coinbase, except with Coinbase, you're not getting any tax benefits and you're paying taxes on both your short-term and long-term capital gains. Hope you guys enjoyed. Huge thanks to all to hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts down below and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.